Hi, Jane Ricks here and welcome to my studio. Today I am going to be showing you one of the ways that I draw portraits. I often um, use a compass and you can see here I am measuring her how high her head is and I'm making a little mark on my page on the top and the bottom uh, and then I'm going to be doing the same thing on the sides and this gives me a good outline of, of exactly where uh, her face is so this is just one of the many many ways that you can transfer an image from a photo to uh, a paper or to a canvas uh, it's one that, that I've had uh, good success with and I feel comfortable with. Uh, I've done this hundreds and hundreds of times and it's uh, second nature to me. And, and once I get the, the main measurements down with the compass, then I can kind of just go off of uh, sight and, and it gives me a, a good idea of where things are located and I can just see them then. Uh, but in the beginning, I, I want things to be exact so um, I use the compass and then once I've got my four points on, I'll uh, go through around the face and get the shape of the face. You'll notice as you start to draw more and more portraits that the, the roundness or the how angular a face is is the thing that's going to give you the best likeness. It's like if you see somebody in a crowd far away, you can't see the details of the eyes, but you know it's it's a particular person because of the shape of the face. And that's what we want to make sure that we get right. So we kind of take our time here and really, you know, look at the, the photo and measure as we go along and kind of, you know, we want that outline of that face just right uh, before we start putting in any of the details on the inside of the face. So I'm using a HB uh, pencil which is kind of mid-range pencil. It's not really hard and it's not really soft and I'm using a really light touch. Um, that's so that it, you know, if later on I, I find I'm I made some mistakes in my measuring. I can go back in and, and erase them without uh, very much difficulty. Um, you always want to you start out really light, and then once you are sure you've got all the the measurements in place and all the eyes, the nose, the mouth, everything where it's supposed to be, that's when you can go back in later and start adding um, more details. Um, and again, here I am, you know, really trying to get the shape of the face correct. So I was just using my eraser to try to get the outline of the mouth just uh, the way I'd like it. Uh, again, I, I double check my width of the mouth and try to just kind of sculpture that in. A lot of times the mouth and the eyes uh, really can make uh, a person come to life or make a person really look like the person that you're looking at. Uh, some people's mouths go up, some down. Uh, now I'm going in and I'm uh, measuring off uh, my nose to make sure that I get it just the right angle. Uh, note every time you're taking a measurement you want to try to take the measurement from the same location. So uh, for instance if I'm always measuring if I measure my mouth from the right side to make sure that I'm coming off of the right side of the the page I'm going to measure my nose from the right side as well uh, that way if I'm off uh, everything will be shifted over you know so it'll it won't be quite so difficult to make a correction because then I can just correct the the left side of the page so Again, keep looking back at the, the photo uh, reference. You want to continue to look and see where lines and angles are coming together. So I like check and see where uh, the shadow along the, the cheek shadows meet up with the nose and I kind of 
angle that off and make sure that it's hitting the nose right at the same spot. Uh, now I'm moving on to the glasses. And again, you know, you want the, the overall length um, and then try to, to uh, measure it in from the outside so that you make sure that you have it in the right location. And just work your way uh, through. So I'm gonna let the music play for a little bit uh, and hope you enjoy this and then I'll pop back in when we start getting to some other stuff. All right, I just wanted to jump in real quick here and show that I also use a straight line to double check my angles. Um, you'll notice before I used a, a straight ruler and sometimes I just use my pencil and kind of just mark off to, to make sure like the, the bottom of her ear uh, and where it was uh, in reference to her nose. And so I'll just angle out the pencil across so they can kind of see, you know, is it above, is it below? Um, and so that's a good way of uh, double checking your angles uh, as well as your measurements.
So if you notice the drawing changed a little bit, uh, that is because when I first did the video, I unknowingly did not record the first part of the process. So I went back and I redrew uh, the first part. And uh, so this is actually, this is actually the first drawing that I did. Uh, the part that you saw before was uh, the second drawing that I completed. But both drawings were done exactly the same. Um, so it'll give you, you know, you still get the same idea of, of how I came about the drawing. I just now have two drawings of uh, her instead of one. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm still new at this video recording thing, so I hope you still enjoy it. So I'm working on the eyes and the eyebrows here, and this is where having a really good photo that you can really see the eyes and, and all the details in the eyes um, becomes very important. Uh, so often when you look at a photo, uh, it's just dark, and that doesn't give you the opportunity to really see the details to be able to add that information in to the, uh, your portrait. So when that happens, you can do two things. You can either guess uh, what is there from experience that you've done in the past and other photos that you look at that, that does have that detail, or you can draw just like the photo uh, and make it just darker where uh, the, the value of the page is just really dark in those areas. Uh, and sometimes that can really give a great, you know, emotional response by doing that. Um, for this, uh, I wanted to have a photo that I could really see uh, more of the details so that I could add the details in. Um, but uh, that's one of the things you wanna look at when you're looking at your photos, having a really good, clear photo can really make a difference when you're drawing uh, realistic portraits because it just allows you to have more information and then you can take that information and decide if you want to include it or uh, just leave it out. Um, but at least when you have that good photo, you have that opportunity to, to do that. And if you have a photo that's blurry or um, out of focus or, or just really dark in areas, um, that doesn't give you that opportunity to do that. So. so here I'm adding in, you know, her gown and her collar, uh, which were uh, a, an iconic piece of uh, definition of who she is. You know, anytime you would see her in her robe, she would have that collar on. Um, so having that uh, in the photo or in the uh, drawing was important to me so that it really defined who she is. Um, so when you're deciding on a, a picture of someone, you want to make sure that, that you're getting that essence of that person. So what is it that makes that person who they are and who you can see as that person? So um, having that uh, collar was important to me uh, in this photo, uh, in this portrait. So think about that when you're picking out what kind of photo you want to uh, pick for your portrait. So now that I've 
I've got the the basic drawing down where the eyes are, where the nose, the mouth, the the whole overall piece. I pick up my 8B pencil and I start going in and I add in the darker pieces. So um, sometimes I'll just you know squint my eyes and see okay now where's the darkest darks of the the picture um, and then I, I go in and I start adding that in and and this is where you'll start seeing you know the picture come better you know you'll 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 notice things more uh, it starts to come alive when you start adding those darkest darks in there um, so anyway all right, and you'll also see that I'm just, you know, flipping the photo around or the drawing around uh, to get the right angle. Uh, it's whatever you feel comfortable at. I want to, you know, sometimes it's easier for me to draw a line in a certain uh, way um, with the, the drawing, you know, right side up or upside down or flipped around. And so, you know, don't feel, you know, that you have to have it up and down all the time. Just flip that baby around. And again, here I am, you know, I've looked at her hair, you know, which side of it it's darker, you know, and I start adding that in. Um, and then, you know, cleaning up the edges a little bit. Um, and again, this is still, you know, it's, it's far from done, <laughs> even though we've been doing this for a while now. Um, you just keep adding layers and layers in here and the more you can add your layers in you know the um, better it'll look the more 3d it'll look so just um, look for your darkest darks add those in uh, and keep working your way around the the portrait as I'm adding in the hair I try to go with the direction of the hair so and I also do this when I'm you know trying to do the face as well as anything that's rounded um, or you know moves in a certain direction you want to try to keep your lines going in that direction and it, it adds that uh, element of 3d-ness you know and so you just followed around just as if I was like moving my hand across her head. Uh, that's the way I want my, my pencil line to go as well. <laughs>
adding in more shading. So one of the things you want to pay attention to when you're drawing with uh, the pencil with the realistic look is um, your lights and darks uh, or your values. So what on her face is really light and what on her face is really dark uh, is part of it, but it's also that mid-tone. It's like, uh, where does she have uh, something, you know, that's not quite the darkest dark or not quite the lightest light, you know, and you need to add those in as well. And that also helps with uh, give it a more realistic look. Um, so, you know, just, you know, pay attention to that. You can see where her cheekbone is, you know, comes down underneath her cheekbone. There's that, that shadow. So you want to, you know, get that in and then underneath her chin, you'll notice that that's darker, but it's not as dark as what her eyes are or her glasses. Um, but it is darker than what is, you know, on the, her nose, on the tip of her nose and stuff. Uh, maybe lighter there than it is underneath her chin. So uh, these are things and as the more you practice with this the better you'll be able to see uh, the difference between uh, the shading along her her face. So here I am using my little uh, eraser to kind of lift up some of the the uh, markings on the page and then I I am again you know just I think with this one I've got maybe a, a 4b pencil and I'm just shading in uh, just all over to give uh, that look that I'm going for uh, but again you know paying attention to high, how light and how dark things are certain things are going to be darker and some are going to be lighter but they're all going to have some type of uh, a color on here because you the only white that you see is on her collar and you can see the difference so her face has got to be at least darker than what her collar is um, because that's the value change in there the, the collar is the, the whitest white um, and then the glasses um, and some of her hair maybe looks like it's the darkest darks and the robe um, and so you want to try to make sure that you're you're getting those color variances or shade variances uh, in your portrait. So, so often when I first started drawing, um, this is probably about where I would stop, you know, as far as uh, the shading and stuff. Uh, and I found that <laughs> I always had this idea, the better I get, the faster I'll be. And in reality, <laughs> I found that uh, the better I am, the the longer it takes for me to do a portrait because I see more, I there's more details to put in, uh, it takes a lot longer to add in um, all the, the, the shadows and the lines and stuff. Um, so the little white uh, uh, thing that I'm using there is a blender. Uh, and it's basically just a rolled up piece of paper. Uh, you can get them at most of the art supply stores, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Dick Blicks, any of those places uh, sell them. And what it does is it allows you to uh, blend the graphite on the page um, with the other graphite. And it also, once you start blending with it, it gets that graphite in the, the paper and you can actually draw with um, the little paper thing that the blender and so normally what I do is I'll I'll go around and I'll, I'll do the whole face with the blender which puts a little bit of graphite on everything um, and then I go in and I'll I'll clean back up um, all my darkest dark lines and my lightest lines I'll you know erase stuff and I'll put stuff back in and that's you know one of the things about you know portrait drawings with uh, the graphite pencils is it's not a quick thing it's uh, adding things in it's taking things back out it's you know adjusting as you go along um, I mean it's a it's kind of relaxing as you get into it and you start you know, moving through it, 
but um, it isn't something that just comes by really very quickly, at least for me. Uh, I'm sure there are artists out there that are a lot faster than I am. Um, but for me, it's it's a process, you know, it's not just, you know, quickly going in and, and doing a quick sketch and you're done. Um, for this type of a drawing, I'm taking my time, I'm adding things in, I'm blending, I'm removing stuff again. As uh, I put stuff in, then I'll, I'll relook at the values. Is that supposed to be lighter? Is it supposed to be darker? And um, eventually it gets there. using the blender uh, a lot <laughs> and I'm actually using the blender to add the graphite to the page so I'm just blending it around and and the more you use the blender on the darker stuff you'll see it kind of smooths things out and I can then continue to use that blender because it's got that graphite on it and just you know move around the page to the darker areas that I want to you know blend out um, and it really gives a nice smooth texture uh, and that's one of the things that I really like about it. Uh, and here I am going in, you know, just cleaning up that edge uh, to make sure that it, you know, is the right angle. And then I go back in with that blender to kind of, you know, make it more seamless. And again, these kneaded erasers are great, you know, for just going in and just lightening up little areas. If you you feel like, you know, you've got, you know, the value too dark in a certain area, you just go in and just press down on it and it just pulls that just a little bit up, but doesn't, you know, erase the whole line that you've got. So 
if you haven't ever done any studies with uh, spheres, with round objects like a baseball or, or you know, something round uh, like an orange or an apple and stuff, uh, I do recommend you doing that if you're planning on doing portraits. It'll help you get the idea of how to make the face uh, look more 3D, more round. Uh, so you'll notice that on the sides of her forehead is darker than in the front part and that gives that 3D effect. And so I'm going in now and I'm kind of darkening the edges uh, and I'll, you'll notice I'll come back in uh, later and, and lighten up that uh, forehead in the begin in the front um, so that it it gives more of that 3d effect but uh, I do recommend that, that you practice with uh, some fruit or you know some round fruit or a baseball or something to kind of uh, learn how to get that rounded edge so it's the same with the nose you see we've got the the tip of the nose is a little bit lighter you've got the highlight and then you've got the the rounded edges uh, that are shadowed uh, so that it really makes it look like it, it comes out of the face and isn't just a, a 2D uh, image but actually becomes more 3D. So I did want to mention that uh, a lot of times when I'm doing my drawings, I have the drawing on my iPad, uh, and that gives you the opportunity to zoom in and be able to see the details a lot better. Um, so if you do have an iPad or, or an iPhone where you can you know, have that photo and be able to, to zoom in and, and really get that detail, um, it, it helps out greatly. Um, I do, I printed it off for this video just so that you guys can see it as I'm working on it as well. But it also helps um, that I know that the, the sizing on the image isn't going to change. If I'm using an iPad and I'm zooming in and I'm zooming out, I'm not gonna be able to use uh, my tools to, to take the measurements exact uh, <laughs> like I've got them. Uh, but uh, so just as a, a side note, uh, using something to uh, zoom in and zoom out is great um, unless you're taking measurements and then you want something that's going to stay the same. So you might want to do both, have the printout as well as um, have the iPad so that you can uh, see things in more detail if you need to. Um, one of the things um, you, as you, I've gone through and I've you know used my blender and I've uh, blended the the graphite all across uh, her face. I do end up having to go back in and add in uh, the darkest darks again uh, because they'll uh, seem to fade in as other things start coming into place. Uh, as you start blending, uh, some of those darkest darks are no longer that dark. Uh, so usually one of the last things that I do will is go back in to my darkest darks and double check them and my lightest lights and make sure that uh, I haven't accidentally, you know, uh, smudged them uh, or uh, done something where they're not standing out quite as much as I would like them to. So uh, that is the last step that I normally do before signing it.
lots of little dots and lots and lots of dots. But I am trying to still look at the photo to see what the angles of them are. Are they dots? Are they not? Uh, how does it uh, look? And, and try to get the essence of it. I'm not trying to be exact on what is uh, there, but I am paying attention to um, the draw the uh, photo to make sure that it, it gives it the essence of what it looks like, not exactly how it looks like for this type of, uh, of piece. that I've noticed about older drawings that I've done um, that I I now look at and I think oh man I was lazy there uh, is when I'm doing you know the the dark clothes like this uh, or dark hair sometimes I wouldn't uh, complete it in as and blend it as, as nicely as it should have been done uh, I'll just do a quick you know scribble on some dark and, and finish it up there and say, okay, it's good. Um, whereas, you know, if, if you really want it to look nice and, and look finished and professional, you have to take that extra step and really blend in that, uh, those dark areas like that and not just have a mass of black, uh, but, you know, really get it in there and, and blend it. It may have to do more than, you know, one or two coats of the black to get it uh, right and to use your blender to, to blend all that color or graphite in. Uh, I say color, but I, I'm basically meaning, you know, just the, the pencil graphite. white there is still some shading in it so you want to make sure that you're, you're catching that as well um, and here I am just 
just trying to clean it up a little bit more, uh, get any of the excess off um, that I may have smudged. That's, uh, that's pretty much it for this one. Hey everybody, I wanted to give you a quick overview of what materials I was using. So uh, the first one is this Bristol, uh, it's the Strathmore uh, paper, it's the 300 series. Um, it is a smoother paper, uh, I like that. I don't like, uh, it It allows me to draw without having a lot of divots in it. Uh, some of the, the rougher paper um, has those, you know, little divots in the paper. And then when I'm drawing, sometimes I can't get the, the graphite inside of those divots to make it look smooth. And so that's why I like the smooth paper for this. Uh, some of the other drawings that I do, I'll use a more rough paper. But for, for this type of a, a graphite uh, drawing, I will use uh, the smooth paper. Uh, also, uh, just uh, regular pencils. These are a knockoff brand. There's some other brands that I do use, but these came in a kit. And so uh, the ones that I use are um, an HB, uh, an 8B, and a 4B um, are what I use for that particular drawing. Um, so I'm, I've got the whole range of uh, pencils, but those are the ones that I like and I use. I start off usually with an HB. When I need my darkest darks, I use my 8B, and then in the mid-tone, I use my 4B. Um, I use uh, a kneaded eraser, and so uh, that's this little thing here, and uh, this is how you clean it. You just kind of stretch it, and it gets all the, the graphite uh, that is collected out of it. Um, and it's great because you can uh, make it into, you know, teeny tiny little areas. If you've got a really small area that you need to try to get uh, graphite out of um, you can just you know make it into the angle or you can you know have more of a, a full body you know extended thing that you can kind of just press down and and, and pull up that graphite um, without you know erasing the entire thing uh, if I need all the graphite gone I'll use um, this white eraser uh, and I've got several different kinds. Um, I've got the, the pen kind, um, but uh, this one uh, works just fine. And then I have uh, a little compass uh, that allows me to uh, take my measurements. I like the ones that are fairly uh, tight that are gonna stay together. I bought some that were really loose and uh, that didn't help if you, you know, if you take a measurement over here and you want to move it over here, you don't want these to move. So you want these to be fairly tight. I believe I bought this at Office Max uh, or Office Depot. Uh, and they're, you know, I think they're student or math aisle or something like that where they've got some of their art supplies stuff. Um, and then a blender. Uh, the blender is great for getting that um, smoothness uh, to the graphite. Uh, so I do highly recommend you get one of these. They come in all different kinds of sizes, bigger ones and smaller ones. Uh, I don't think it really matters. I do notice that, you know, the tip will get darker. And so sometimes, you know, I'll just, you know, mark it on my sleeve, <laughs> which is why all my clothes are kind of nasty. But, uh, <laughs> Or you can use uh, an X-Acto knife to shave off the edges of that as well. Um, but I don't do that very often. I like having the extra graphite on there. It helps me uh, to draw and to move the graphite around. Um, so that's it. If you like the video and you've lasted this long, uh, please like it down below so other people can see it as well. So, uh, And if you want to support me as an artist, please go to my Patreon page. Uh, it's at patreon.com and my page is Jane Ricks Art Studio. So have a fantastic day and I hope you learned something today. Bye.